Here in New Hampshire, we are still sorting through the outcome of the midterm elections, while also getting ready for the beginnings of what could be another epic first-in-the-nation primary process. This morning, we're going to hear from both parties, and we'll start with the New Hampshire Democratic Party Chairman, Ray Buckley. Thanks for joining us. Sunday morning. So I feel like we've seen this particular episode before in New Hampshire politics, where Republicans are getting ready to write your political epitaph, and then you and the Democrats come back and score a big win. So in your opinion, what was the big difference maker for Democrats this year in terms of taking a situation that structurally looked difficult in these midterms and turning it into a success? Well, I think that uh, anyone that was paying attention could see the great successes that we were having uh, in um, uh, the special elections uh, throughout all of last year, uh, the city elections where uh, we we uh, won every single uh, mayor's race that we were involved in uh, and uh, picked up, I think, four to one uh, in school boards, city council seats, uh, and in town elections, again, it was a complete uh, wipeout. So uh, there were signs that it was going to be a very good year for us. Uh, and as you know, without uh, the gerrymandered districts, we would have won uh, up and down uh, the ticket with the executive council, the state senate, and the house. Now, I'm interested for your perspective on some of these things that we're seeing that we had never seen before on, you know, Londonderry, Chris Pappas winning there, Maggie Hassan almost winning there. That's a GOP fortress traditionally. We see the trend line over time is that Democrats are winning more high income, high education voters. But you came up for a very different Democratic Party, the working class Democratic mm -hmm. Party. The Bruce Springsteen songs were real to you. <laughs> I'm wondering if you feel like that Democratic coalition, if you can still hold on to those working class voters over time and what the party needs to do to do that. Well, I think you look at the successes that we uh, have in places like Summersworth and Manchester and Nashua uh, and other cities that are very uh, still very uh, blue collar the success we had in Laconia uh, so uh, we do have we'd still uh, maybe nationally they're struggling but here in New Hampshire I think uh, with the leadership of Jean Shaheen uh, and her connection uh, with the working class of New Hampshire I think uh, uh, gives us a, an advantage over uh, elsewhere in the country and certainly one of the drivers of that change was President Donald Trump in terms of changing some of the mm -hmm of things and we'll see if it snaps back over time but now he's back on the scene as well running for president in 2024 Look, I'm just guessing, uh, as much as you don't want to see him elected president again, you're probably not too unhappy uh, if he comes to New Hampshire and really tries to put his stamp on the party here again, because the track record is clear. It seems like he's alienating more voters in the Granite State than he's winning over. Well, every time he has traveled to New Hampshire, we've done better and better, and I was quite disappointed that uh, he didn't arrive just before uh, the November election. Uh, perhaps if he had, Chris Suter would have lost. What do you do, though, about the Trump question over time? Um, we didn't bring up Donald Trump uh, this election at all. Uh, the people already know uh, what he stands for, the law lawlessness of not just his administration, but, of course, the attack on uh, the country on uh, January 6th. We don't need to keep revisiting that. People understand that very clearly. In just a few weeks, we'll presumably know what the DNC Rules and Bylaws Committee mm -hmm. will decide regarding the first in the nation primary. Did the election results on November 8th bolster New Hampshire's case for retaining first in the nation status? Oh, absolutely. Uh, when you look at uh, the results of the congressional delegations, both Senator Hassan, uh, Congressman Pappas, Congresswoman uh, Custer, with their historic wins, the size of their wins, uh, despite uh, the polling, uh, and uh, the success that we've had uh, down ballot. Uh, despite the re redistricting and that uh, we receive more votes for the executive council than the state senate and the house now uh, we don't have the majorities as of right now because of uh, the gerrymandering but it certainly gave us a pathway uh, to knowing where uh, our victories will be uh, in uh, 2024. As much as we all love New Hampshire, looking at this from the DNC perspective, it's a hard decision. There are states who are going to be left upset by this process. There are constituencies that might be left upset by this process. Do you worry that the Rules and Bylaws Committee might try to split the baby here and say, well, a group of you can go first? Well, I, I don't think uh, from my conversations with members that that's uh, anything that's being seriously considered. Um, I feel, I, I've always felt uh, quite uh, confident uh, that we're going to retain our status, and I still uh, believe that that will be true. Uh, we obviously have had uh, many conversations, uh, and uh, we'll continue to do that right up until the vote uh, on December 1st or 2nd. Now you have a uh, trailblazing state senator, or former state senator, Melanie Levesque, declaring her candidacy for secretary of state as well. 
in the 3D chess aspect of this that also has to play into the DNC's decision because her election comes after the DNC Rules and Bylaws Committee meeting. Seems like it'd be pretty hard for the DNC to sandbag a, a trailblazing candidate like this running for Secretary of State and then taking the primary away mm -hmm. from her. Well, you know, uh, we're very excited there's going to be a healthy uh, conversation uh, about uh, the direction of the Secretary of State's office. It's the first opening in over 40 years. Uh, and so it's going to be an important uh, thing, not just uh, for people at the DNC, but people around the state of New Hampshire uh, to make uh, their voices heard uh, to their elected legislators on uh, what kind of uh, Secretary of State uh, do you want? What, what direction? Is it about enabling people to be able to vote uh, and having those votes counted? Or is it about uh, protecting a certain political party? This fight over the primary never goes away, and it stays with us forever, I guess. But mm -hmm. the, the primary's biggest defenders, particularly in your party, tend to be on the older side. And I'm not sure if you asked me to pick out, you know, who is the real primary defender at, at the younger level, among the younger Democrats. I'm not sure I could pick one out, and certainly I don't see that um, on their preferred media, you know, social mm -hmm. media, Twitter, and things like that. They're not big into this fight. Is that a problem, do you think, long term, that you don't have a lot of buy-in from younger Democrats? Well, uh, I think that uh, if you talk to Manny Espedia, the president of the New Hampshire Young Democrats, uh, you'll see a great support. In fact, uh, he was part of our presentation in our uh, what we presented the DNC with. Uh, the uh, the national uh, president of the High School Democrats of America is Samay Sahu out of Nashua, uh, a, pr a young man of color who was just phenomenal. He's on the DNC by, by that position, uh, and he's certainly making his voice uh, heard with the members of the RBC. So I, I do think that you, you see a lot of young, young voices in there. Last question for you, and perhaps the most crucial moving forward. Do you believe President Joe Biden will run for re-election? Yes. Do you want him to? Yes. And I, I what do you think his case is going to be with, I mean, he's going to be the oldest president to run for re-election ever. Well, he's so far the most successful president we've had uh, in our lifetimes in the first two years of his service. I think he is going to continue that role. He has been masterful uh, in addressing the national issues, uh, despite the ferocious uh, personal uh, attacks on the Republican side. Uh, I think that uh, we're going to continue having a very successful uh, administration for the next six years. All right. New Hampshire Democratic Party Chairman Ray Buckley, thanks for your time on Close Thank you.